aloha and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's program, Don't Just Age, Engage. I'm your host, Larry Grimm, and I'm delighted to have you here as we explore the important dimensions of aging, aging and becoming an extraordinary and having an extraordinary elderhood in our lives. I was rocked by this decision by the Supreme Court this past week or two weeks to uh, uh, take an assault on the Roe v. Wade law, uh, law of the land, which we have practiced over the past decades. And I am just wondering what's going on? What in the world is happening? And I have asked a, a good friend of mine and also a very strong active community activist in, uh, in Kailua, Marion Heidel, to come join me on this program today to look at the role of elders in social justice and seeking justice in our society. And uh, she has consented to do that with me. And hello, Marianne, welcome to our program. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad, I'm glad to try to do this. <laughs> your, your, your effort is well received and well appreciated. Um, so I'd like to the viewers to kind of get a chance to know you. you ha you're a pretty remarkable woman, but I don't expect you to, to talk about how remarkable you are. But I would like to ask you to share a little bit about your past and how you have come to be such a strong activist in community and social justice affairs. Well, just a little bit of background on me. I was born in Ningpo in East China uh, in 1936. So that makes me 86 years old. Most people think I'm in my 60s or 70s. My yep. father was a medical missionary. Um, and we left China in 1948, and I grew up in California and uh, Washington State. I met and married my husband, John Heidel, while he was studying for the ministry in 1962. And we moved that year to Hawaii, where he had an internship at Central Union Church as youth minister. Later, after finishing seminary, uh, he became chaplain at Punahou School. I had trained to be a medical technologist and worked at that for 10 years, and later as uh, secretary for the student exchange programs at Punahou that uh, were under the Woe International Center. Um, in Hawaii, my social justice uh, involvement has been first in the League of Women Voters, and, the, and I participated in Martin Luther King Day parades, and, and then in uh, Family Promise, more recently, 2006, I think it began, a program for transitional housing for families. Um, and it operated first through the coalition of uh, uh, Windward churches and then expanded to Honolulu churches. Um, and I was kind of the head of that in my church, Christ Church Uniting. And then uh, finally, our, our church also was one of the first churches to join in the work of Faith Action for Community Equity, uh, Faith Action for short. And it operates on the principle of um, beginning um, uh, with, the, with the folks in the churches and what they feel is, is the situation in the community that um, needs to be changed or fixed and and from there you go on to uh, um, generally have to go to the government and um, and and make some changes mm -hmm. through them for instance the well, first thing yeah oh okay go ahead no thanks maria no. that is a really good overview and <clears throat> i'd like to highlight that i <clears throat> that the motivation that you have for uh for being involved has been has been from uh, from a, a deep deeply rooted in your past and in your faith experience it seems to me uh, talk about your motivation just a little bit part of what i do in this program is present to the viewers uh, wonderful examples and of and, and models of extraordinary elderhood and i consider you to be an extraordinary elder and uh wondered if you just share a little bit more about how uh, how you're motivated to, all through your life to be involved in these issues? Well, um, I don't feel, for one thing, I don't feel my age physically, uh, but 
but I also uh, <clears throat> emotionally, and because I, I feel like it's my responsibility. Um, we in Christianity are supposed to be helping to create the quote, kingdom of God here on earth. At least that's what I believe. And um, so for me, that means joining to work with others on social issues that are unjust. And for those uh, who are poor, hungry, houseless, um, um, those in prison and, and those who lack opportunity and, and, and also taking care of our planet. And so um, I just feel like that's a responsibility I have both personally and, and I'm sure because of my mm -hmm. feeling like uh, this is what God <laughs> wants, wants me to be doing. Well, that, that, is, that sure takes you out of a, any kind of comfort zone, I would think, um, and helps you engage, moves you to engage um, the powers that be, uh, it can at least, and, uh, and to do so in a loving and caring way with, for others. And I, I couldn't help but think, as you were talking about seeking the kingdom of God and, and um, bringing it about here on earth, how some evangelicals will say the same thing, basically, as their motivation, but they, as there would be a, a very different agenda. And uh, I'm very, very concerned about that, that we, we come to this building, kingdom building in the world with such totally different agendas, but with an idea, the same basic motivation. Are you, have you ever given some thought to that? This is kind of a complex question. Oh my. <laughs> um, well, I don't I don't like to say what all evangelicals do or or, or think. Uh, I mean, I know I probably have my own sure. um, mistaken ideas, but um, <clears throat> I think that we do need to work through our communities and the people in them and in government and the city and and of various groups that we need to work through them to change the things uh, that mm -hmm. um, that are generally have caused problems. <laughs> yeah, well, it, certainly puts a, it puts a challenge to the church, um, the church universal, that if if we could could get together and and uh, talk over some of these separate things that separate us, uh, we might have some uh, interesting approaches to collaborating. Uh, in the future, but so, so Marian, you've been involved through Christ Church Uniting Disciples and Presbyterians, Kailua. You've been involved in FACE, the Faith Action for Community Equity. What have been some of the most fulfilling, fulfilling engagements that you've done that you are, are um, you feel um, personal investment that you feel like, like you've very, really accomplished something important? Well, I, I think the idea of how they started, where they start in, in, at the ground level where the people are and they find out what is bothering them in the community. And, and so, for instance, the first things they did was uh, the people, uh, the churches who were over in, in, uh, on the other side of the hill from Kailua, uh, Kalihi in that area, they didn't have any uh, bus stops with covers over them. So they had to sit in the rain or wait in the rain. And so that was one of the first things that they thought about needed to be done and they got it done. They, the city built um, some bus stops that, that were covered in areas where a lot of people have to wait for the bus. Another thing that they um, did was, um, oh, in the same, kind of area, I guess, in the Kalihi area, area of Honolulu, they needed, they had a lot of crime going on. And, and so they just needed to have, they thought, uh, a few more policemen present to watch out for it. And, and so they talked to the, I guess, to the police department and, and made that happen. And but so you're saying then, that this is some of the action of FACE, FACE? Right. Well, that's a, that stands for Faith Action for Community oh. Equity, and we're yeah. trying to make things fairer for everybody and and lift the level. And so now, um, what the important things are 
that they have a housing committee that's working on uh, housing for houseless, uh, houseless, excuse me, and for um, a low income and affordable housing uh, up through the median area mm -hmm. income. There's a committee on environment, taking care of the environment, and there's a committee that's working on um, social uh, justice for the uh, criminals, and they've been really strong on putting forth the cash bail uh, law, um, which may have some things to be tweaked, but, <laughs> uh -huh. but, um, but uh, in all that uh, area, those areas particularly, oh, well, yeah. and, and long-term care, they've worked on that for since the beginning, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I'm, I I've been on the steering committee um, and primarily my role has, if I can't come up with good solutions for things, uh, is at least to get the word out to my church folks. And mm -hmm. so that's what they like about me right now, I guess. They would probably like me to be more active on a committee, but uh, they, they have me to send the word to the people in my church to see if we can get more involved. And you're excellent at that. You do such a good job of recruiting and, and engaging people. I'm curious about this, uh, Marianne, because I'm interested in elders and providing extraordinary elderhood for people. Um, what, how would you say this is your, your, your approach to Joseph's justice has changed over the years? And how is it different? Particularly, how is it different now in your elderhood years as it was from your adulthood years, say in your 40s or 50s. What has happened in you that's different in, and, and that comes into the, that you bring to the table now? Um, well, like I said, I started with the uh, um, League of Women Voters um, because I admired some older people who were doing things like putting out a booklet on the candidates, you know, so all the candidates for that were running for something. So you'd know something about who were you doing that. Well, and so I suppose what I was actively doing more then than I am now is being on a committee that, because the league always studies something before they make any pronouncements or promote anything. And so I think I was, one of the ones I was on had to do with the, uh, nuclear weapons and stuff like that and so uh -huh. I, I I did more studying at that time and and um, I probably did more marching and demonstrations and parades then than I do now although I, I still go out sometimes <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but and then as far as uh, family promise and um, faith action goes, I've, I've probably, you know, I'm not, well, family promise has changed so that there, there isn't much I can do right now. But at the time I was uh, one of the, one of two people who were coordinators at my church and, and planned, the, you know, recruited the people to do the meals and to take, to stay overnight with the uh, families who stayed in our church, that kind of thing. Um, I wasn't, yeah. yeah. And, um, and for faith action, I'm I'm not sitting on any committee now, uh -huh. but no, I'm I still, you know, interested. And and the other thing is, I don't do it enough, but is writing testimony, you know, on a law, um, yes. uh -huh. which which is something older people can do now, as, as long as they feel like they have their wits about them, um, can can call. They can write letters. They don't have to go online, but but a lot of elders are learning to go online and and can easily send uh, uh, you know their pro mm -hmm. or con, con. Mm -hmm. i noticed when you talked about um the the women's uh league I'm of sorry, women voters league of women voters that you you mentioned that there were some older people that put together this booklet and that sort of inspired you yeah. you're in that position now you are the one who inspires and you are the one who um, uh, you are one among many who are able to say to the uh, to envision set a vision out for younger people. Uh, do you feel that? Do you feel that uh, operative with you and some other elders in your group in your uh, circle of, of influence? 
Um, I, <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't know whether I have anything to do with it, you know, other than being present, but as far as faith action goes, if you notice now, um, the staff and all are, are much younger people and the people who are on the committees are younger people. And uh, I don't know how many of them are actually members of some church, but uh, like, like Faith Action started with, with church groups. Um, mm -hmm. um, now I, we have other young people that may necess not necessarily be in, be in the church, but in the community, but who, who have come in to, to operate Faith yeah. action. Yeah. So I saw I saw a uh, a cartoon on Facebook that I really liked. It was it was a a cartoon of a oh a thirty something woman standing in front of a perfume salesperson and saying, "For Mother's Day, what my mother wants is that her activism of long ago is not worth nothing." <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> you know, that, that's the. That's so true. I, I felt the same way when, when again, when Alito's uh, writing and the, and the uh, assault on on Roe v. Wade started has come out of, by the Supreme Court, been leaked out. I thought, have has all of our work been for nothing? I was um, I was president of the Religious Coalition for Reproductive Choice in Colorado for three years, and we worked very hard with Planned Parenthood to gather leaders of faith communities together to to uh, learn, to advocate, to bear testimony to a society in which women's productive rights, rights for productive health care were protected. And those are rights already given in my mind that don't, don't come from any constitution. But so so I that 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 really grabbed me because I thought sometimes I have that sense of what is this world coming to? All that we've, all the efforts we've made with nuclear disarmament, all the efforts we've made to, to uh, speak on behalf of nonviolent resistance on change, um, all the efforts to social a society that is just, uh, not only in America but throughout the world, a, a global society. <clears throat> all of that feels as though it's suddenly slipped away. What's happened to? I have another friend who said he was naive that thought the Supreme Court was impartial and not not uh, political and now he sees that that's not at all true um are you feeling some frustrations like that uh yes yeah. uh although you know we watched a couple of uh things on Amer the american experience just recently one was on the um it was called uh stone stonewall and it was about the LGBT th uh, explosion they had. Uh, yeah, I mean, a demonstration that they had years ago in New York. And then oh, wow. recently, we just watched the one about the Chinese Exclusion Act. Well, I think we've, <laughs> we've grown a lot beyond that. And, and um, so, it, you know, it, uh, people say that we'll, uh, because you're older, you have a lot of wisdom. Well, I wouldn't um, say, that um, we have wisdom that, and the young people don't. Uh, I, uh, but I do hope we are. We are. Uh, uh, we do have uh, memories of what things were before, and I see things in lots of ways changing for the better. Um, although we still have, you know, another crowd of people in the states who don't. Uh, uh, believe the way or act the way I, I would, you know, <laughs> yeah. would, would want them to. But I think um, older people, uh, well, younger people can see new ways of, of um, enacting change and not doing things just the way we used to. And they, so they need our support. Um, but many of us over the years have developed morals and ethics and devotion to efforts that improve the uh, community. So uh -huh. we can be mentors and examples of what humans can be and what institutions should change. Um, mm -hmm. And like I say, you know, even if you have to stay home, you can influence that by yes. the kind of testimony you send. 
Okay, here's a here's a question that would have come from a um, from a viewer. Must say say this question comes from an elder person like yourself who is not involved, and it says, "Must I have a solution before I confront social problems that are upsetting me?" Oh, I don't. Would you? No, I don't think that's the case at all. I um, if you get involved in the question and seek out the, the, the people who are dealing with it, and they are uh, both elders and young people, then you, you know, you will, one, for one thing, you'll educate yourself. You'll learn of other possibilities and you'll see that there's a, a, a you're building a group of people that can work on that and, and try to make some change. So I think, um, no, I don't think you have to have a solution. Um, I think you just have, need to have a willingness to learn and to think about it and, and maybe bring up your objections or, or the things you don't think will work and, and see the possibilities that other folks come up with. Excellent. And I'm blocking on her name, but the, um, the anthropologist, the great anthropologist, who uh, was in China, uh, who said, never doubt that a small group of common, of, of people sharing a common view or a common idea can change the world. It's the only thing that has. Margaret Mead said that. Margaret Mead, yeah. One of my, <laughs> one of my favorite, <clears throat> favorite reminders that when, when people of, of <clears throat> excuse me, common ideas get together, uh, they do start to change the world. And it doesn't have to be 100% of the population that agrees. Actually, change begins to occur with 5% of agreement, and then 20% of agreement um, kind of solidifies things, actually, in terms of, uh, terms of social change. So it's, uh, it's, it's very much a group process that we're, you're, you're touting here and saying that we can become involved in. <clears throat> so would you say it? You still feel as though you're getting out of your comfort zone, or you have you settled into a nice comfort zone that you can just watch from the fringe? Uh, I don't think I'll ever be comfortable uh, watching from the fringe. I'll feel guilty, and that's not comfortable. <laughs> I guess you could say that's not comfortable. But um, I, uh -huh. I do. I think I don't feel real comfortable. Uh, having to uh, speak up and give solutions and things like that. Um, it, it's even difficult for me to talk to you like this because I, I, don't, I don't talk off the cuff very well. <laughs> but um, but I, I certainly, um, and it's difficult for me to talk to people who have an opposite view from me, and especially if they're, uh, they, they sound, uh, very negative about things and, mm -hmm. and and if they well you know i'll be very frank it's really difficult to talk to people who think trump is wonderful <laughs> and uh and they and they come at you with all these facts that they say are facts but i don't think they're facts you know and i don't know quite how to uh talk back <laughs> but so that that's that's a comfort zone that i don't have. Um. Uh, yeah, I think you're absolutely on target with many of us who, and, and we do, we do, all of us go into our own echo chambers with each other. But um, one of the challenges, as I said, as we started this conversation about, uh, about the church universal, how do we engage uh, within the body of Christ or within the church or within faith communities universal when we have faith people of strong faith conviction to pursue something different. And certainly the advocation for ad advocacy for Trump and his um, white nationalism is not something I wanna pursue and will not do that with anybody. Um, but we've got to do some kind of dialogue around these issues within the, within the uh, church itself. It seems to me that is well, a big, big challenge. Yeah, I, I think, um... <clears throat> a church, the only way they can handle it is be, be good if they have a pastor that 
uh, fosters sharing um, doubts and interaction and so forth, but also people within the congregation um, can kind of uh, try to have a, um, a presence that says, I want to hear your point of view. I want to try yeah. to understand that uh, yeah. and then, uh, as well as express my point of view and see where we can find some common yeah. ground. Yeah. Um, yes. Diversity that, is that goes, we, for, we, that goes for theology as well as um, as well as social justice issues. <laughs> I think you're absolutely learning, right. Learning to talk to people who um, are so adamant about something that is very difficult, and but I think we have to try. Good point. Very good point, and and that goes for both sides because someone who differs with me in terms of the vision of the outcome would feel as though I have the same sort of erroneous ideas and yeah. uh, approach. So yeah, we do, it really takes a lot of help and effort, I think, to be guided into a dialogue like that. Marion, thank you so much. Is there one last word you want to give to uh, an elder out there who's listening to us, who uh, wants to get involved but not sure how to do it, who has a passion but not sure what to do with that passion? Um, well, just let it be known <laughs> that to someone, you know, that you, because they can probably also point you to other people that you could talk to. Um, but uh, I think, I, I, I hope that people will uh, still feel like they, that, that their ideas are good, that their, their morals and ethics are something to share and um, that um, what they say and do makes a difference. Um, like I said, uh, when I was younger, I really admired these older people that, that were involved in, in um, social justice issues and, and politics and voting and all that sort of thing. And it made a difference to me. <laughs> and it's why you're here on this program. <laughs> Marion, thank you so very, very much. And I, I do, again, I do admire you and your abilities and your, your selflessness in this pursuit and the, the faith from which you are motivated to, uh, to see the realm of God come to, to being on earth. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Thanks Don't for just age me. engage. <clears throat> Don't just age engage is on I Think Tech Hawaii every two weeks, Tuesday at two o'clock. Uh, Hawaii time. Come back in two weeks and join me again. And if, while you're on the web page here, the website, touch that donate button and give a quarter or a quarter of a hundred dollars. <laughs> give twenty five bucks or give a uh, give a hundred dollars or maybe the thousand that you've got over there in the in your pantry uh, waiting to be uh, put on some kind of good strong uh, community action uh, concern. Tell, Think Tech Hawaii serves this community in a beautiful way and to bring community thought together. It is a community forum and uh, your community, your well-being and your practice and your participation in it financially and uh, through listening is, is very important. Thanks so much. See you in two weeks. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.